Hello everyone, today we're looking at changes in holidays and travel with the objective of finding out how have holidays changed over time. Now, you might remember a little bit earlier in the year, we looked at the word holiday uh, and we broke it down into two different words. So we broke that down into the word holy and into the word day. Because the word holiday as we know it actually comes from the word holy day. And that was a day when people would take time off work. They would spend time with their friends and their family at the most important building in the village. Which I'm sure you could guess would be the church. So what we'd like you to do now is to find yourself a piece of paper and about half an A4 size sheet should be absolutely fine for this and to take a few minutes to recreate this table. So you will notice that in the left hand column here we have uh, three historical eras. So the medieval era is from the year 500 to the year 1500. The early modern era is from the year 1450 to 1750 and the modern era is from the year 1700 to present. And I can already hear some of you saying, wait a second, that doesn't make sense. If the medieval era ended in 1500, how can the early modern era have started in 1450? Well, the reason for this is if we were to look at a timeline, if you will, so if we have the medieval era first, we have the early modern era, and let's use green to represent the modern era. Uh, you'll notice that there's this little, little crossover period here. So this is 1500 and this is 1450. This, of course, is 1750 and this here is 1700. So we have these crossovers. The reason why we have these periods where these eras overlap is because we as historians, we don't actually really know when that era ended. It was a gradual change over time. And it's kind of like asking uh, a young person, when did you become an adult? Uh, uh, at what age did you become an adult? At what date did you become an adult? Was it the 15th of August, 2019? Can we put a date on those big changes that happen in our lives? And historians have a very difficult time putting an exact date when these historical eras change. But we know roughly when it happened. So you might say, well, I became an adult sometime around when I was the age of 15 or 16. And that's much the same as saying the medieval era ends in the 1500 and the early modern starts in 1450. Take a few minutes to recreate this table. Uh, you'll want a few lines uh, to be able to write in a few facts for each, but we won't be going too overboard today. When you're done creating that table, uh, please press play and we'll carry on with looking at each era. Excellent. So let's start off looking at the medieval era. Remember, this is from the year 500 to 1500. So in the medieval era, holidays and travel were centered around holy days. And these were religious holidays, often starting with a church service. Uh, and religion was really important in the medieval era because religion explained everything that happened in people's lives. Uh, the sun rose because God wanted it to. The sun set because God said so. If it rained and irrigated the crops, God was happy. If it didn't rain for weeks on end and caused a drought, God was angry. If you never got sick at all, God was happy with you. But if you were constantly ill, God was punishing you. Now, any kind of travel would only take place within your own village. And there's two reasons for this. The first reason is you didn't have a vehicle that could transport you far distances very easily. And the second is like these people uh, we see here, they're too busy working. People in the medieval era worked six days a week, uh, 12, 13, or even 14 hours a day. So they didn't have the time to be able to travel uh, to another place. The only day they got off was Sunday, and on Sundays, as we know, everybody went to church. Plow Monday was an example of a holy day. Groups of boys would go around asking for money or food, uh, and they would just knock on people's doors. Now, if people were rude and said, go away, uh, you know, get off my property, they would grab a plow and they would dig up the entire front garden. 
Now, some people celebrate a holiday today which is quite similar to this. So if we were to look at Plough Monday in a bit more detail, so we have people going around asking for money or for food and knocking on doors. So what kind of holiday does that sound like? And if you're starting to think this is quite similar to Halloween, you're absolutely correct. This is one of the earliest precursors to what we see as modern day Halloween. So now's the time to start thinking about what you would be including in the who went, what they do, where they go, why they do it, and lastly, how do they travel? So if you want to pause the slide, uh, take a few minutes just to fill in your table. And again, we'll take this up at the end. Okay, now looking at the early modern era, uh, most regular people, much like the medieval era, wouldn't travel outside of their own town very often. Uh, again, this was because you were too busy working. On a Sunday, you had to go to church. But if you were rich, it was quite a different story. You could travel abroad. You didn't have to stay in your village. You could go elsewhere in Europe. The really popular holiday was called the Grand Tour. And this is where a rich young man would travel around on the European continent, seeing all the sites that he's read about in his studies. So when he was reading all about ancient Greek uh, history or ancient Roman history, he would actually go to Rome and he would see the Colosseum and be able to experience the history that he was reading about in books. So they would go around and look at all these ancient sites, and it was led by someone called a bear leader. Now the bear leader, this was often someone who worked at the school, they were kind of like a tutor, uh, and they would manage the money on the trip and try to avoid the young men getting into any kind of trouble. Now, if they did get into trouble, the bear leader would try to resolve the situation by paying for any damages and making sure that there were no consequences. So again, now's the time to fill in this row. So for the early modern era, again, anything you miss, we will be taking up at the end. And our last uh, historical era, this is the modern era. And this era goes from the year 1700 all the way to now. Now, in the late 1700s and into the mid 1800s, rail travel was the way to go. Uh, steam engines were now powering very large trains and trains were initially used to ship goods from place to place over long distances, but people soon realized if we make a carriage that can hold people, we can move a lot of people a really far distance in a short period of time. And the more trains there were, the more affordable they became. And this is something that we call supply and demand. You may remember this from other lessons where we talked about the more there is of something, the less it costs us. So the more frequent the trains are, often the lower the price. The less frequent the trains are, the more expensive the price. And you could think of this as taking a train from High Wycombe into London. There's always trains coming through High Wycombe. And you can typically get into London for under 25 pounds return, uh, return journey. But if you go from somewhere like Saunderton, where there's very few trains going through, you'll notice that the price is going to be a bit more expensive. Now, by the 1970s, a lot of budget airlines started to make short flights very affordable. Uh, EasyJet, Ryanair, Wizz, all of these are airlines that specialize in short flights, uh, you don't get a lot of leg room, you don't get a nice in-class uh, meal on the flight, but really you're only sat in that seat for a couple hours at most. And this meant that now, instead of just traveling within the UK, uh, people could go away to Spain for a week. Cars became much more affordable as well in recent years, uh, as well as rail tickets, and this meant that more people now have access to this method of travel. And holidays are paid in many jobs. So depending on the job that you decide to do later in life, uh, you can receive paid holiday time where you don't go into work, but you're still getting paid your normal salary. Now we'll notice that in the modern era, a lot of these holidays we'll notice are no longer holy days. Uh, they're not really centered around religion. And we'll also notice that they're not taking place within your own village, that now you're able to explore a little bit further afield. So again, now's the time to fill in the row here, and we'll take them up in just a moment. Great. 
We're filling out our table. So who went on holidays in the medieval era? Well, most people did because they were holy days. Now, what did you do? It was a religious festival. It would start with a church service. You'd have some family time. Now, where'd you go? You went to the local church in your village. And for how long? Well, it was usually a day since it was a holy day. Now, why did you do this? Well, religion was everything to people at this time. And in some cases, it was actually the law where you had to make sure you were attending these holy days. And how did people travel? Well, you would probably walk into town. If you were really wealthy, you might ride into town on horseback to show people uh, how much money you had. Uh, fun fact for you, in the medieval era, owning a horse was pretty much the same as owning a Ferrari today. The early modern era, who went? Uh, most people who would leave and go abroad were rich young men, uh, but for the most part, a lot of people would still participate in those holy days in the early modern era. Uh, so what they do, well, they would travel a field, they would go to Europe, they would see ancient famous sites. Uh, they sometimes would get into a little bit of trouble, but don't worry, the bear leader would sort it out. How long would you go for? Uh, a grand tour, this holiday for rich young men, could last anywhere up to six months or even a year. Uh, regular people, they would stay in the UK. Wealthy people would go abroad for a few months. Well, they would do this type of holiday to finish off their education, again, going and seeing the sites that they had read about. And you would have to travel in a few different ways. So a stagecoach, think of it as a very early car. Uh, there's no engine, it was pulled by a horse, the wheels were wood, there was no suspension, it was very uncomfortable. Uh, and you would use a combination of walking, stagecoaches, and boats to cross the English Channel. Now, lastly, the modern era. Who goes on holidays? A lot of people do, uh, whether it is a holiday domestically within the UK or abroad. So what would people do? Various holiday activities. Uh, city breaks are quite popular, just going and checking out a new city. Days, uh, all-inclusive resorts, uh, different types of holidays for different people. Where would you go? Well, some people would go abroad. Uh, typical holidays for us now, a few days if you're seeing a city, you might go away somewhere for a week with your family. Why would you go? Well, maybe it's for rest, it's for tourism, it's just for a general holiday or some sightseeing. And how would people travel today? Well, you could take a train, you could take a boat, you could walk, you could drive a car, or you could go in a train. We hope that that gives you a good idea as to how holidays have changed over time, from their early beginnings uh, as holy days, which are very religious, and changing today to short city breaks, uh, as well as taking planes off to the south of Spain for a nice warm weekend away. Please make sure that you go on to show my homework and complete the quiz and any other tasks set by your teacher.